Cheryl Stokes and I like to teach arts and crafts to adults and children, anyone who wants to learn about crafts. I love it. So I'm going to teach today about painting beads. The great thing about painting your own paper beads is that you can choose what colors you want. No matter what project you have, you choose what colors you need and you don't have to search in stores for all kinds of colors that they don't even have. You choose yourself and it's great. Have fun! When making paper beads, you can use paper that you buy, which is like this one, or paper that you get in the mail, junk mail like this, or you can tear colorful pages out of magazines, like this one. When you roll the beads, the part in the middle doesn't show very much, but the ends do. Both ends will show a lot. So it's important to have the colorful parts on the edges of the paper that you're going to be cutting. And gluing one, cutting this and gluing it on here made an extra long paper. And so that will make a thicker bead than if you use a smaller paper. So you can take paper, and this is paper that started out like this, and this is scratch paper. My husband's a musician, so we have lots of music pages and that are extra. And we paint, paint right on top of the music, and the black parts of the printed pages, not necessarily music, but any kind of printed pages that you paint on, the black part makes highlights on the bead that looks really pretty to have little black specks as part of the bead. So that's a fun way to do it. There's also drawing. You can use markers, like um, permanent markers, like these are Sharpies. You can draw on the paper first before you paint it. And that will also add some nice black accents. This one is more subtle. Subtle means it doesn't show up as much. But this is using some colorful Sharpies, like these, underneath the paint. So that's a little subtle. That doesn't show up as much, except the blue was a fatter marky, like this, um, marky, Sharpie marky, <laughs> a fatter Sharpie. And so that shows up a bit better than the skinny ones. So that shows up more. Another fun thing you can do for color, when I paint paintings, I usually like to put a piece of paper underneath when I'm painting like this and I paint and it goes off on the edge and it makes a big beautiful mess on my paper. So I like to use these for making beads and you can, instead of just having this color, you can take marker, markers or paints and paint right over this to add colors to it. Okay, now this was one that was like a paint catcher also. So when I was painting something, it spilled paint all over. And when it was done, I took another piece of paper on top of all this paint spills. I put it on top and then I smoothed it around like this and kind of picked it up and squished it like that and opened it up. And I ended up with these and they make some nice brown toned beads. I've made a few beads out of that and they look pretty. This is another one, but it didn't have very much paint spills on it. So I took some watercolor and made all different dabs of color with the watercolor paints on that to add more bright colors. And those made beautiful beads. For the watercolors, I have markers here and watercolors, all different kinds. Different sets of watercolors make different brightnesses or shades of the different colors. So you can use all different sets. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay, so I have a paintbrush. And I like to do it over a tray so that I can catch any spills on the tray. Okay, so you can take a marker and you can make lines, you can make squiggles, doesn't matter. You can make hearts, but when you make the beads, the hearts won't show up. You won't know it's a heart, but it's kind of fun to just make any old marks you want on the paper. That, straight lines, crisscrosses. Okay, or you can use the colorful markers. 
make lines with colors. Okay, then you take a paintbrush, dip it in the water, take your paint tray, decide on what colors you want. Let's see, how about this pretty one? This is a fuchsia-like color. You put the water in there and you do this a little bit like that. And you notice that I'm petting it like you would a cat. You don't go wah, wah. That ruins your paintbrush. You do this, brush it like that. Then you take your brush and put it on your paper and you don't have to um, paint along lines or anything. You just put it on any way you want. See, just, it's called hodgepodge. Just put it on any way you want. Make sure you get all the way to the edge. If you need to, put newspaper underneath your page so that when you paint across, it doesn't ruin something important. I'm gonna set this aside to dry, but I have some others that are already dry. This is a bigger paper. You can do it on all different sizes, depending on how big you want your beads. So, this is my paper cutter, and that makes it fast for me to cut paper. Now, if you don't have a paper cutter, I'll show you how you do it instead. That over a little bit. You take a ruler and mark on the back, and make a line. Okay, now you kind of want it to come to a point at one end. So that is the part I'm gonna start with on this one. And over here, I have to look and see how fat I want the bead. I'm gonna make it a little skinny. Now, if it's this long of a paper and not too fat here, then it will make a rounder bead, more like a ball. Okay, now I've made that line, but my ruler's not quite big enough. So if you don't have a big enough ruler, all you do is move it down, put your pencil here on this part of the line, and then match that one up like that, and then just continue drawing, okay? There you go. Now I'm gonna draw the second bead also because I wanna show you that the second bead, you wanna start right here with your little point. If I started here every time, then the beads would get as I'm drawing my lines, it would go like that, and pretty soon you just have these short little papers. But if you do it this way and put every other one pointing in the opposite direction, then it makes it so that you can get all your beads the same length on the paper. So there, I did the, that line. I'm gonna come down here. Now this bead's gonna be a little bit fatter. So I match up my pencil there and continue the line. Okay, so then you can use your scissors, and if you are an adult, you probably have this kind of scissors, and if you're not, then you probably have this kind. So I'm gonna use the little ones because they're safer, safer for children. Okay, so we just cut those out. Now those are cut, and here's our stripes. And let's do one of these also. And I'm gonna do those on my cutter. So in case you have a cutter, this is a fairly safe cutter for children. So this part, it's the same thing. We line up the tip right there and make this be as fat as we want it. We can rotate it like this, make fat beads or thinner beads. And then you press down and push down while you're sliding it, okay? And then lift it up and take out the bead. Now, the skinnier ones, it's very easy to use this nice tool. This tool has a little slot right there. There's a slot and you can put your paper in the slot, like this. Find the slot and put it in like that, 
okay? Like that. So one thing you can do before you do that is kind of do that a little bit and see how that makes it curl in the right direction. You want the colorful part to be down, I mean up, and the blank part to be down, and then you put it in your slot like that, and then bring the tool to the very edge, and then you bend it. Now this tool doesn't have a very big slot compared to the size of the bead, so this part right here, you might need to kind of press it down a little bit like that, see that? Okay, now this is the tricky part. You want to have your finger there, like your finger is a table, and just roll the tool, and I kind of keep my thumb here too, and roll the tool like that, and this part here that's coming, the white part, I try to center that. And if it gets a little off, I can kind of tug it a little bit in one direction or the other. Okay, like that, and just kind of move it till it's straight and keep turning. When you get good at it, then you can do this, go whoo, fast. Okay, and then if it's a little crooked, you can kind of push it a little bit over like that, okay? The next step is to put glue on it. We have different kinds of glue. This glue is Elmer's school glue. Squeeze out some of the glue. See, just little bits like this. Now, the next part is gonna be a little messy. You put your finger here, and you, it's got glue on there, and the glue's gonna squish out onto your finger. So you roll it like this, and see how it's squishing the glue out? Squish, squish, and it's going on my finger. Keep rolling, then I already got to the end, but I keep rolling more. And I kind of go like this and turn it onto that glue that went on my finger. And that's coating the bead and giving it um, protective coat and makes it so that later it can't slide. After it dries, it can't slide. Okay, then you can get it off by pushing on this end with your fingernails like that. And push it off the tool. Then you can put it on a wire, like you can see here. We have wires, and that, you don't have to do that part, but that makes it so you can dry it easily. So then you can thread it onto the wire. Another thing you can use, because the tool has such a little slot, if you want to make a fat bead that's bigger than this slot, it'll be a lot easier if you use a tool like the skewer, or I have these that I just have because I like to knit, but this is like a knitting needle, things like that. It needs to be something that is um, straight, not tapered. Tapered means like this paintbrush. See how the paintbrush is tapered? That wouldn't work as well because it's fatter at one side of the bead than the other. So it'd be nicer if it was a straight thing. So this works good. A chopstick would probably be tapered and not work as well. So this is how I do the skewers to make, use the skewers to make beads. I take it like this and I kind of curl the end a little bit to encourage this front edge to go around the bead. Move that out of the way. Okay, then, this is a little bit of the tricky part here, is kind of press down, press down as you curl it. That's important to press down to make it curled flat onto the skewer. Then, you turn the skewer like that, and then you might be just rolling the bead and the skewer would stay still. When you're using this, you do this and turn the handle. If this isn't really tight, then see I'm turning the handle and the bead stays still. So that doesn't work as well on a skewer. On a skewer, you'll be rolling the bead itself. So you can do this, you can use two hands and roll it. It's a nice fat bead and just roll the bead itself and try and keep it straight. Like 
Now this was the longer paper, so it's going to make a little bit bigger bead, plus the skewer in the middle makes a larger hole. So if you have a fat, let's say a fatter elastic that's not as skinny as the kind that goes through the little holes, if you have fatter, then the skewer would be a better thing to use because it makes a big fat hole. Okay, now I went a little crooked. So what I do is kind of hold on to this end and just push it a little bit in that other direction to straighten it before I get to the end. And then when I get to the end, I put a little bit of glue right there and then I run the glue along all the way to the tip. Then I'm gonna hold the bead and turn the bead and I'm getting the glue on my finger. That's the messy part. And I'm turning and turning and then I'm gonna run my finger down both edges while I'm turning it and that gets the glue on here to make it so it can't shift as easy after you take it off. Okay, and then you take off the bead. There we are. What I like to do with them is I have different ways to support the wires because I like to paint them with glue after they're done to make them extra coated. So I put them on wires like this and you can take a box and this box is skinny so I can poke these pencils all the way through both layers and it makes it so the pencils don't flop around. So what I do with the wires, I wrap them around the pencil like that. Then I wrap it around another pencil. Let's move those down a little like that. And then my beads are up in the air like this. Then I can take my glue and squeeze it out onto the bead like this. And it's painting the bead. Then I can kind of turn the bead a little bit and do the other side. Like this, and that gives them a nice coat. The beads that are coated with school glue are not very shiny. If you want shinier, then there's this type of glue, which is um, clear glue, and Elmer's makes it clear glue also, and it's shinier. Also, Elmer's Glue All, which is, looks like this, but it doesn't say school glue, also makes a shinier bead. So we can paint these with the different colors of glue, either white, which dries clear, or clear, which also dries clear. They both dry clear, but this is shinier, this is dull, more dull. After you have painted the glue on your beads and they're as dry as you want, then you can take them off of the wire and thread them onto either an elastic um, band or this one is, um, this is a little bit fat. This is called 1.5 millimeter and I think one millimeter would be better. So this would be a little bit fat, but that's the size I had. And it's a stretchy elastic key plastic cord. So you just poke the cord through the hole and push it down like that. And if one end is stubborn, then try the other end, it might be easier. There we go. Now let's take these off, take them off nice to catch them in a little cup so they don't roll around on the floor like that. and sometimes it's nice to put one um, bigger bead in the middle so like this one we just made we could put that in the middle and then put other beads on the other side of it so each of these is a different piece of paper that I painted so you can see there's different color schemes these ones were painted on a paper bag. And so you can see those are kind of more um, subtle, shaded brown colors. That's because the background was this paper bag instead of white paper. You could also use colored paper. This one used red and black and gold paint. 
so you can get different looks deciding on which color schemes you want to do. Okay, you ready? Now we're going to continue stringing the beads. And if I was making a bracelet that I wanted to wear, I would probably choose um, certain beads. Right now I'm just pulling off these that I had a variety of colors done. So a lot of these don't go good together in my bracelet that I want the colors to be. But So if I was making a bracelet, I would choose colors I like together. You can also sort the beads by size and put different sized beads together and put little teeny beads on one string and big fat beads on another string. You can do that. And you can see this bead has the little black lines on it showing through because it was printed paper. It was already printed, I think it had music on it. And so it made the little black highlighted designs. Okay, now we have the beads all strung up on this stretchy elastic. You wanna put it back down a little bit toward the end, not too close. You wanna leave enough that you can tie it. Okay, so the way you tie it is you pull that you wrapped it around. Did you see how I did that? You cross it, bring that one toward the middle, then bring the other one, whoops, do that again, pick it back over again. Bring the other one around like that and pull the two ends like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then after you pull it, then do it again until it feels like it's going to stay. And then you can put, um, if you have a strong type of glue, you could put a bit of glue on there if you have the type that's really strong. Okay. And then you can, after it's, the glue dries, then you can trim these edges. Okay. I'm not gonna put it on my hand because it's too little. There we go, that's how you make a necklace or a bracelet.